2024 has already been an incredibly rough year for the games industry, especially if you're a dev working in that industry. We've seen a ton of layoffs already. We're already on our way to well outpace what was a horrible 2023 in terms of game dev career losses. And it looks like Sony is not immune. They've been hit with a huge amount of layoffs of about 900 or 8% of their workforce today. And we're going to talk about this blog post and what it means for PlayStation moving forward. Hey everybody, I'm Bobby here from Direct Gaming. And we're going to talk about the layoffs at Sony and what it means for their future projects. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe and feel free to hit the like button if you enjoy this video. Dislike if you don't enjoy it and leave us a comment letting us know what we can do better for next time. So Sony today put out a blog post titled Difficult News About Our Workforce. Sony Interactive Entertainment has been kind of struggling. They lost $10 billion a week or two ago. Uh, so we know that they're kind of on the back foot. Uh, this blog post is from Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment. At the time of writing, he is on his way out. The post reads, the PlayStation community means everything to us, so I felt it was important to update you on a difficult day at our company. We have made the extremely hard decision to announce our plan to commence a reduction of our overall headcount globally by about 8% or about 900 people, subject to local law and consultation processes. Employees across the globe, including our studios, are impacted. These are incredibly talented people who have been part of our success and we are very grateful for their contributions. However, the industry has changed immensely and we need to future ready ourselves to set the business up for what lies ahead. We need to deliver on expectations from developers and gamers and continue to propel future technology in gaming. So we took a step back to ensure that we are set up to continue bringing the best gaming experiences to the community. Below, I've shared a copy of the email I sent out to the company this morning to provide more context on our thinking. We deeply appreciate support and understanding from the PlayStation community as these decisions are very difficult. Please rest assured that our plans for reorganizing and streamlining are so that we can continue to deliver the best gaming experiences possible. So we're hearing the usual corpo speak from Jim Ryan and you just, you can't really say anything. This is the same kind of thing that, you know, Phil Spencer put out with the Activision Blizzard layoffs that other companies put out when they've done their massive layoffs. And it's just a really sad thing to hear with the gaming industry kind of in disarray right now, especially as AAA game prices have blown up. You know, while we didn't cover it here, it's hard to ignore like some of that stuff that came out in the Insomniac leaks, such as Spider-Man 2 costing you know over 300 million dollars to make that's i mean that's more i think than the avengers movies uh or it's really close to it so and you're you know you're definitely not seeing that return however it's really unfortunate that this is affecting a lot of people who've worked really hard to bring us like our favorite gaming experiences from the reports so far this is impacting just about every sony studio We've heard reports that people at Naughty Dog, Insomniac, and Guerrilla have been affected already. We've also heard that Fire Sprite is having a number of layoffs as well. And we know now that the London PlayStation Studios has closed down entirely. And this is a studio that Jim Ryan went and visited just a few days ago. They had a little going away party for him because he is retiring. So this is kind of Jim's legacy uh, at the end of the day is going to be he's leaving with a bunch of layoffs in his wake. Another one of the things that was shared in this blog post was the email that Jim sent out company wide that told everyone how people who are impacted were going to be affected. Uh, the email reads team this is important to provide you with updates about the business as often as possible. Today I am writing with sad news. Though discussions over the past few months about evolving economic landscapes, changes in the way we develop, distribute, and launch products, and ensuring our organization is future ready in this rapidly changing industry, we have concluded that tough decisions have become inevitable. The leadership team and I made this incredibly difficult decision to restructure operations, which regrettably includes a reduction in our workforce, impacting very talented individuals who have contributed to our success. After careful consideration and many leadership discussions over several months, it has become clear changes need to be made to continue to grow the business and develop the company. We had to step back, look at our business holistically, and move forward focusing on long-term sustainability of the company and delivering the best experiences possible for our community. The goal is to streamline our resources to ensure our continued success and ability to deliver experiences gamers and creators have come to expect from us. I want to be as transparent as possible with you, our partners, and our community about what this means. And we have a couple bullet points here. 
We envision reducing our headcount by about 900 people or about 8% of our current workforce. There will be impacted employees across all SIE regions, Americas, EMEA, Japan, and APAC. Several PlayStation Studios are affected. I know that receiving this news will be hard and unsettling, and you are wondering what this means for you. Timelines and procedures for how we approach this will be based on your location due to local laws and regulations. For those of you in the US, all impacted employees will be notified today. In the UK, it is proposed that PlayStation Studios, London Studios, will close in its entirety. There will be reductions in Fire Sprite Studio, and that there will be reductions in various functions across SIE in the UK. The proposed changes mean that we will enter a period of collective consultation before any final decisions are taken. All employees who are part of the collective consultation will be made aware of the next steps today. In Japan, we will implement a next career support program. Details will be communicated separately. In other countries, we will begin conversations with those who are potentially at risk or impacted as a result of this proposed course of action. For those of you who will be leaving SIE, you are leaving this company with our deepest respect and appreciation for all of your efforts during your tenure. For those who will be staying at SIE, we will be saying goodbye to friends and colleagues that we cherish during this process, and this will be painful. Your resilience, sensitivity, and adaptiveness will be critical in the weeks and months to come. This will not be easy, and I am aware of the impact that this will have on well-being. Affected employees will receive support, including severance benefits. While these are challenging times, it is not indicative of a lack of strength of our company, our brand, or our industry. Our goal is to remain agile and adaptable, and to continue to focus on delivering the best gaming experiences possible now and in the future. Thank you for your understanding during this difficult period. Please be kind to yourselves and to each other. Jim. So, Jim Ryan here spells it all out in the email if you're in the u.s uh apparently the note is hey uh you're screwed sorry if you're in the uk it looks like regulations require you to have a little bit of notice and they're going to be kind of consulting and all that and in japan they are going to be making sure to assist people finding a new career um, this kind of goes to just show the difference in labor laws between countries because yeah in america it's a you know you're on your own sorry just get out uh, and I mean, it's been that way since I worked back at EA and that's exactly what happened to us. They just called us in one day. It was like, hey, you're gone. Bye. One of the big things about this is that it just goes to affect people in such different ways. For me, after I lost my job in the games industry, I just didn't want to go back. And there's going to be a lot of people who are like that. We're going to see a lot of great talent just leave the industry because now there's just this huge, huge amount of people who are going to be searching for jobs and companies are not going to be hiring because they just let a bunch of people go to cut down on overhead. The other thing is that leadership needs to be more responsible for this. People like Jim Ryan, who are making millions and millions of dollars a year, they're not sacrificing anything. They're cutting these people to make sure that they don't have to sacrifice anything. And that's the same thing that happened at uh, Activision with Phil Spencer going, hey, we're cutting a bunch of people. You know, they cut 1900 people like last month or earlier this month, I believe. And it was just so that, you know, upper management could keep those profit margins and get their bonuses. And of course, all of this is really stemming from 2020 and 2021, where all these companies overhired because of COVID. They were like, hey, everybody's inside playing games. We got to make sure we have stuff instead of going, hey, you know, let's let's scale back some stuff, make sure we can still get games out. But maybe they're not the huge grand scale that, you know, we generally put things out. This is one of the huge problems that Sony has is that they feel like they need to be just making constant, huge AAA blockbusters. Otherwise, nobody's going to buy anything. And I'm hoping they're seeing with the success of Hell Divers 2 that, you know, the AA space is ripe for the picking. There's not much in the AA space anymore. It generally is like the biggest indies are referred to as like AA. But people want those games that are just, hey, I can play a multiplayer game that's fun with friends, knock around, uh, shoot a bunch of stuff, and and then call it a night. You know, me and my brothers have played a bunch of Hell Divers. Just about everyone I know who has a PC or a PlayStation has played some Hell Divers recently, and everybody's loving it. And that should be one of the things that Sony learns from this: is hey, not everything has to be huge and crazy. Like, don't get me wrong, I still would love to see. You know, large scale God of War, large scale Spider-Man. I want to see those projects continue because I love those projects, but it's clearly unsustainable. $300 million budgets, $200 million budgets for every game that comes out of a Sony first party studio is not a sustainable trend, especially when some of them maybe barely make that cost back. 
I think this is going to be a huge wake up call for the industry that, you know, the, the huge industry heads are, are going, hey, we can't do this. We can't sustain this way. One of the biggest things that we need to look at, too, is Nintendo. Nintendo has avoided this largely. I don't think I've really heard of many layoffs from Nintendo in the last two years. And the reason is because they produce things that are scoped correctly, that are within a scale that they know they can sustain. If you look at Nintendo's huge hits, while sure they had a huge, huge spend and scale for Tears of the Kingdom, back in 2020, we're talking Animal Crossing. And those games do not have a huge budget like something like The Last of Us 2 or Horizon. If PlayStation wants to maintain their market position, what they need to do is really take a step back and adjust scale to be in line with what's realistic and what's sustainable. I don't think that anybody would mind if PlayStation put out smaller games here and there. It would mean we would get games more often and games that are just, you know, pure fun that maybe they can charge you $50 for instead of 70 because that budget is reaching two to $300 million. If they put out something where the budget is $40 million, they can go, hey, you know what? We might have a lot of luck. This game's a lot of fun. We may be able to charge 50 bucks for it. And then they end up with 10 million sales of a $50 game. They've made tons of money on that, and they've made their customer base happy still. The biggest part about this is that really it's tarnishing Jim Ryan's legacy, who I felt generally, you know, he had a good run for the most part. He made the PS5 really successful. Uh, certain other ideas like the, the PlayStation Portal have been really runaway hits that nobody kind of saw coming, but that thing is still moving quite a bit. But now on his way out, he's going to be remembered as the guy who led to 900 layoffs, you know, an 8% workforce reduction because he drove the culture of unsustainable growth. And it's really unfortunate because a lot of people did have a fairly decent view of him up until this point, probably. All that is to say that Sony having these layoffs is just another part of this industry trend that we've seen evolve over the last two years. Another thing that I'm really hoping for is that this does lead to a lot of people taking jobs with AA or indie studios. And yeah, they might not be as glamorous, they might not pay as much, but having a more sustainable culture around how you create and, and your sense of scale and scope for your company is gonna mean that in the long run, you end up surviving. And I know a lot of us gamers just want fun games to play. We've seen that with the success of, like I mentioned, Helldivers 2 and even Pal World. Both games, you know, they have their kind of double A, kind of janky feel for some stuff. But overall, they're just a fun time and people are happy to play those games. They're happy to pay full price for them because the price isn't $70. And I think this move is just going to show us that that needs to be the path for a lot of companies going forward. I hope Sony is taking notes from Helldivers right now that, hey, we can create something that's just fun and we don't have to make sure you can see like every little like whisker on Kratos uh, in every single game that we make. Get back to like the bread and butter. We're making games that are fun for people to play and hopefully we can see them right the ship sooner than later because I would love to stop reading these layoff stories every week. Anyway, get on Bobby here with Direct Gaming. Let us know what you think about Sony laying off uh, 900 people for from SIE and whether or not you think this is good for Sony uh what you think about this in terms of Jim Ryan's legacy do you look at him differently now that on the way out he's kind of just letting go of a ton of people I don't know I kind of do so let us know down in the comments below thank you again so much for watching today and I hope to see you soon